Good evening. This is the Guyana Learning Channel's News in Capsule for Friday, July 2, 2021. Here's a look at the top stories we will be covering. Region 9 Agriculture Department gets a data management system. 12,000 doses of Sinopharm vaccine to arrive in Guyana tomorrow. And COVID-19 tax relief extended to December. In the world of sports, five-member teams selected for AMBC Championship. And regionally, Jamaica's junior medical doctors stage sick out. And internationally, U.S.-U.K. agencies accuse Russia of political cyber campaign. With the news in detail, I am Daniel Singh. The Agriculture Department of Region 9 has added a new aspect to its operations through the launching of the first data management system. The launch was held earlier this week at the Regional Democratic Council boardroom. With the establishment of this database system, crop and livestock extension staff are now equipped to practice smart agriculture using location-based technology to capture data. Additionally, six heavy-duty tablets, which were donated by the RDC of Region 9, were given to the staff in each sub-district to record data easily. The driving force behind this project is Dr. Darren Haley, Regional Agriculture Coordinator. The project was established by Dr. Persaud, owner of a company that provides monitoring and evaluation of GIS projects, develops GIS tools, services, database, and more. Smart agriculture is an integrated approach to managing landscapes, cropland, livestock, forests, and fisheries that address the interlinked challenges of food security and climate change. This piece was extracted and modified from the Department of Public Information. The remaining 12,000 doses of the purchased 100,000 doses of Sinopharm vaccines are expected in the country tomorrow. This is according to Minister of Health Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony, who was at the time conducting Friday's COVID-19 update. The 12,000 doses of the Sinopharm vaccines are the remainder of the 100,000 doses the government of Guyana brought from the People's Republic of China to ensure every adult gets vaccinated. The entire batch will ensure 50,000 persons are fully vaccinated. As the government's COVID vaccination campaign continues, more than 48% of the adult population has taken the first dose of the vaccine. According to the minister, as of yesterday, over 230,000 persons have received their first dose of vaccines, representing some 48.1% of our adult population. Meanwhile, Minister Anthony said the vaccination campaign is resuming in remote hinterland villages, which were inaccessible due to flooding. The minister is encouraging all adults to take the COVID-19 vaccine to push Guyana closer to achieving herd immunity. The aim is to have approximately 500,000 adults vaccinated. This piece was extracted and modified from the Department of Public Information. The government's tax relief measures to support individuals and corporations amid the COVID-19 pandemic is extended as per the amended list of COVID-19 prevention, care and treatment supplies, which remains free of customs duty, value-added tax and excise tax where necessary until December 31, 2021. For VAT purposes, all the items are zero rated. For the list of items, you can visit the website listed below. And now in the world of sports. AIBA three-star coach Terrence Poole has been selected to lead a team of four boxers to the American Boxing Confederation Youth Championship qualifying tournament from July 11 to 19 in Mexico. The quartet of boxers will be led by Caribbean champion Alicia Jackman. President of the Guyana Boxing Association Steve Ninval said the association is keen on providing opportunities for local boxers to get exposure to another level of competition. He said the association is currently working on getting the necessary funding to ensure the trip is a reality. This was extracted and modified from the newsroom. And now for regional news. Operations at public hospitals across Jamaica have been disrupted as junior doctors stage a sick out. Scores of Jamaicans have been denied health care since Thursday morning as the doctors stay off the job to protest the non-renewal of employment contracts of 147 of their colleagues. The contracts expired at midnight after a meeting on Wednesday with the Jamaican Medical Doctor Association, JMDA, and regional health authorities ended without a resolution. JMDA President Dr. Mindy Fitzhenley has raised concern about the issue amid a relaxing of COVID-19 restrictions and the likelihood of another surge in the cases of the virus ahead of the start of a new school year. She said health facilities will be under severe pressure to cope without adequate number of doctors. 
Dr. Fitzhenley said some of the doctors are upset about being offered six-month contracts as this is a breach of the heads of agreement, which stipulates that the doctors should be offered two- or three-year contracts. Dr. Fitzhenley painted a grim picture of the potential impact of not having enough doctors in the event of another COVID-19 surge, even as the country already grapples with long wait times for different medical emergencies. This was extracted and modified from Caribbean National Weekly. And now for international news. U.S. and U.K. intelligence have accused Russian military hackers of being behind an ongoing cyber campaign to steal emails and other information, including from parliaments. The campaign is primarily focused on the United States and Europe. There are said to be hundreds of targets around the world, including U.K. political parties. The same group allegedly stole and leaked Democratic emails during the U.S. 2016 presidential election. Microsoft has previously stated that the same campaign targeted U.S. and U.K. organizations directly involved in political elections, including U.K. political parties. The campaign is said to have begun in mid-2019 and to be almost certainly ongoing. It has mainly been directed at organizations using Microsoft Office 365 cloud services, but other service providers have also been affected. The National Security Agency, NSA, and Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the UK's National Cybersecurity Centre have released a joint advisory accusing Unit 26165 of Russia's GRU of being behind what they call a global campaign to compromise enterprise and cloud environments. This piece was extracted and modified from BBC. With that, we've reached the end of our broadcast today. You can join us again on Monday right here on the Guyana Learning Channel for another edition of GLC News. On behalf of the technical team, thanks for watching and remember to stay safe, Guyana.